Saying goodbye is the hardest. Goodbyes to the moments, the ones that if you were given the option, you would relive again and again. Goodbye to the feelings that you know are fleeting. Goodbye to love after love, to the ones you never thought would let you go. Goodbye to seasons, to warmth, to laughter, to pieces of who you were. Goodbye to my old body and all the other bodies and all the value they carried for me and all the places they carried me to. Maybe fall when the leaves change and all the bright colors turn cold and things end. Maybe falls when we move on. Maybe as the leaves change, we also change. We begin again. But that's it, right there. And I guess in order for our new journeys to begin, we have to learn how to say goodbye. Life has happened fast. I swear yesterday the most trivial thing on my mind was what outfit to wear, what to eat for dinner, whether or not that boy liked me. When did these thoughts evolve into where will I take my career? What is my purpose? Do I even know me or love myself? When did hating the shape of my body turn into hating how I shaped my values in my life? When did that innocent crush turn into a four year relationship that was slipping out of my fingers and now into someone else's? When did every decision become so much heavier and each day become so much harder? Like when did life become so much bigger than me? So much more challenging than what I was ready for. I used to want to run away from my body, the shame it carried, the extra skin and the weight, but now I want to run away from my own thoughts, my mistakes, the unknown, from my own mind, because this weight, the one of having to come to terms with growing up and goodbyes and having no one to rely on but me, the weight of never being good enough. Whether that was in the mirror or on the scale in my classes, in my relationships, or in my mind, this weight is something I've never learned to recover from, because I've always just ran away from it covered it up, got too busy, so I never sat with this emptiness. I tried to fill it up with anything and everything just so I wouldn't have to feel like I wasn't enough. With boys and drama and hatred for my body and obsessing about numbers and comparing and competing to fill that void of insecurity. I wanted to fill it with anything, fill it with anyone, anyone but myself. And because of that, I never learned how to help myself or be enough for myself. My peanut butter stuck to the top. I always blamed others, that they didn't value me or respect me or think that I was enough for them. But the truth, the hard, cold truth was that I did not value or see or respect me. And I think the world was trying to tell me that this summer. I was running away from people and opportunities and YouTube and reality oh, and the you. potential of failure by distracting myself, making excuses for myself, <laughs> feeling bad for myself. I ran and I ran and I ran this summer. Okay, bye. And it worked for a while. It did. Until, you know, bye, babe. it didn't. This summer, the most amazing, wonderful opportunity fell apart. And I was kind of forced to stop running. Hey, guys. I've been freaking detained. I'm eating a bit raw. I just cried for about, like, three hours. I'm healing up. I think it's going to be okay. I got detained. We'll try again tomorrow. Yep. So we never did get back into the US, but the only thing that kept me going through all of the airport stuff was the fact that I brought four built bars with me. So many different flavors, so much protein. Honestly, a lifesaver. The bars made this experience a little less terrible. What would I do without you, built bar? What would I do? Make sure to get 20% off site wide and check out the new flavors being released on Black Friday. Ooh. So, yes, I got detained and sent back to Canada. And now I'm eating a spinach egg wrap. Kelty, I hope you're having a wonderful time in Denver. Unfortunately, I cannot join you. It's okay. I have my egg wrap and my cucumbers and my corn. At first, I blamed the universe, I blamed US Customs, I blamed my managers, my parents, my actions, my words. I was stuck now, sitting in my own pain and discomfort and guilt for not being able to meet you guys in LA or to meet Lily, literally my idol in life. But then I remembered my most repeated saying to myself, what's meant to be will be. Something I honestly don't know what force was just telling me I wasn't ready. I wasn't grounded enough, it wasn't my time, and I needed to stop running away and start facing myself. But of course, I ran away from this too. Typical. So I guess this end of the summer road trip started and ended it all. Oh my god, it's so good. And on this trip, I learned a lot about myself and taught myself how to stop running. The idea of happiness is exactly what took it away from me. Good morning, Matt. <laughs> I wasn't happy, and I hated that I wasn't. I was sad that I wasn't. I resented myself because I wasn't, because I thought That's I should. Early. My life is good, therefore I need to be happy. I cut out people, so I need to be happy. I have a wonderful job, so I need to be happy. <laughs> Are you oh, that was good. What did I just say? No, Linda, no. Just listen. 
Oh, you guys are not on breakfast menu Happiness yet? is good. It feels good. We all want it at the end of the day, but the absence of it is just as equally important. Accepting the other emotions that come along with being a human being, you have to learn how to handle those emotions too. Happiness for me has always been tricky, and it's always been outside of me. A body, clothes, attention, a grade, the amount of likes, the amount of money. I didn't try to make those the sources of my happiness. I was just never taught to look within, so I never thought I was enough for myself to be perfectly content and happy. I was taught to want more, to be more, to have more, but no amount of anything more could make up for the lack of self-love. No amount of external happiness could bring me real peace. They took a bite. It's so beautiful. I don't even know so what they take a bite. <laughs> Where's the chocolate? Oh my god. Mm, so good. Nutella coffee? Wait. Uh, where? Mm. It's really good. Yes. <gasps> Okay. Oh my god, what is this? Right? Mm. So my question to you is, what do you want? What are you striving for? Where is the source of your happiness? Is it something that's external? Is it only after you've landed the job, the goal weight, the perfect partner, the wardrobe, the followers that you'll finally, finally be happy and truly at peace? Or maybe if we could just find peace with who we are on our journeys of creating this life we want, maybe that's what real happiness is. Let's find it so good. Hey. Mm. I'm so happy right now. I'm the urban happy of my life. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> For me, it's not about the diet anymore or being able to have the self-discipline to go to the gym against my own will. It's not about the way I can't fit into any of my clothes. Happiness was never about completing those four months of restricting and only eating hard-boiled eggs and lettuce. It was never about the pizza or the fries or the boy or the ex or the relationship. It wasn't about glowing up or getting the revenge body. <laughs> I was never going to bring me happiness. It was always about learning to love myself. Heavier, fitter, lighter, smaller, bigger, single, dating, starving, or full, loving myself and regaining my worth, identity, and power. I hope to continue evolving to the point where I can feel peaceful even when things in my life are a little challenging, when things don't work out, which they're not always going to. My goal is that even if I get banned from the US or rejected, heartbroken, even when a 10 year friendship ends, to allow myself to break, but know that I will find my way back to me. That is true inner peace. That is good. Mm. Mm. The flavor? It's so creamy. Maybe a part of growing up is looking back at the decisions you thought were so right and just internally crying a little bit and just cringing so hard and feeling so stupid and realizing maybe you weren't always the victim. I owe a lot of people apologies because I realize now nobody has the responsibility or power to make me happy or filled but me. So I'm sorry for blaming you for not being able to provide me the security, acceptance, and love that I lacked from myself. I guess the first step is always seeing it, accepting it, and learning how to base my happiness on the things I can actually control, like my energy, my kindness, my ability to help inspire and impact others. Okay, sorry for the interruption. I just need to tell you guys. Black Friday. Black Friday. Black Friday. Black Friday. Black Friday. Gymshark. 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 Thursday, November 18th. 2 p.m. EST. Up to 70% off select products. You just can't miss it. So put it on your calendars and get some good sales. That's all for me. Okay, bye. I also learned after years of blaming others for stepping all over me, using me, and taking advantage of me. Dirty chai latte? Can I get a cold brew as well? You're right, they shouldn't have done that. But I also shouldn't have let it happen time and time again. The power of setting boundaries, everyone. Honestly, one of the hardest things. Setting my boundaries, speaking up for myself, not being afraid to be too much, not easy. If they can't handle you, they don't deserve to take up space in your life. If they can't accept you as you, it's not you that needs to change, it's the relationship. If you don't set your boundaries, other people will, and they will always go over yours.
I think one of the main things I really realized this summer was that I really don't know who I am. That was a hard one. I had a lot of wounds and tears that needed healing, that needed a lot of attention. Honestly, a team of search and rescue people would have been ideal. But yeah, I needed healing and the only person that could do that for me, again, was me. I had to take accountability for the person that I am. The perfectionist, the people pleaser, the girl that carried her insecurities everywhere she went. I thought maybe if enough people could love me or wanted to be my friend, if enough boys gave me attention, if I could fill myself up with enough praise from teachers and- oh. That's good. Compliments from Instagram that could heal those insecurities, but it didn't. If you don't start acknowledging and loving all the parts of yourself, your shadows, your light, your bruises, your scars, you will constantly be editing and hurting yourself and the ones around you. And that's exactly what I did. It doesn't mean you're flawed forever or not good enough or too broken. You are not too much or too little of anything. Loving yourself is acknowledging that you are a perfectly flawed human and that each of us are a work in progress. It takes a lot of courage to admit that we don't have all the answers and need more healing. You are everything. You are everything as you are, with every scar and mistake, feeling, size, flaw, you are everything. We freaking made it! Love for yourself is the first step. Not just on your good days, or when you do something right, or when someone gives you attention instead. When you break down, when you think you can't do it, when you get triggered, when you fail, when you do something so embarrassing that you think you can't live it down, you must love yourself regardless. Without it, you can't approach life with the love that life deserves, and you can't accept the love that you deserve to feel from this life. It all starts with you. Alright, we must start with morning. It's all over your house. And, uh, how is your Quebec trip so far? Très bien. Oh. Oui, oui. J'aime le Quebec. Where was the favorite place you ate? Oh, bon question. Uh, <gasps> Nowhere? <laughs> what is your favorite place? Uh, my favorite place? My favorite place? Ice cream. Today? Yeah. That was your favorite place. <laughs> This is our hotel. Wait, Cindy, give them a little tour. I'm learning about YouTube views. I'm just not gonna put any of this in. So this is our little bed area. We have some nice complimentary water. Okay, it's very dirty over there. Many clothes on the ground. This is for you guys. Don't want to, want I cannot fight time and life and the things that happen for me. I can't run away from growing up, no matter how hard oh, I try. Oh, holy sh! Are we no matter doing how this? hard I try, I cannot make someone love me or care for me. I cannot make something wrong right. I cannot live a life that does not serve me. I can't turn back time or keep living in the past. But what I can do is learn, is accept, is believe, and to continue. I can choose to continue. Oh, choice. You have to eat it. This is so good. So good. Can we come back tomorrow? I need to eat this again. This is the best thing I've ever eaten in my whole life. While we're saying goodbye to all the parts of us that no longer serve us, this is the perfect time to say goodbye to my old body. It's not about forgetting all the struggles or pretending I never hated my body because I am me because of my old body. What is that? I am no longer living the life I lived in that body, so let's free ourselves from it, shall we? First, goodbye to those arms that were smaller and skinnier. I now welcome and accept my new arms that may be, yes, bigger, but there's no point in letting my arms pull me down. They should lift me up. Well, my legs, they've changed. They're fuller and more muscular, and while I have to say goodbye to some shorts and jeans also, and sometimes I'm nervous to show off my muscles, I will practice being proud instead of shameful of how much power these legs of mine hold. Mm. Mm. I'm so happy right now. Whenever I have a change in heart, I change my hair. So goodbye old hair and hello to all the new possibilities and adventures I will be going on. Goodbye to the hands that would squeeze and pull all the parts of me I decided were not good enough. The hands that pushed away seconds of cake, the ones that reached for safer options, the ones that kept increasing the speed on the treadmill when all I needed was to slow down. The ones that craved comfort in people, in everyone else but me. I'm building new hands that treat me gently, hug each inch of my body and embrace every crevice and imperfect dent. And I want hands that help me create instead of destroy. Goodbye to the eyes that only saw what others had and what I lacked. That could only focus on what was outside of me. Eyes that didn't see me. My new eyes will see me as much more, as completely and fully as I am.
Goodbye to the mind that never thought I was enough. Goodbye to the heart that was never full. See? Maybe goodbyes can be some sort of wonderful beginning. So, out of billions of people in this world, the chances that the people in your life ended up in your life, they're pretty freaking low. My mom told me the other day, all of these people, the ones that have gone, the ones who have stayed, the ones who have hurt you or loved you or changed you, they are all your soulmates. I thought long and hard about the people who have made an appearance in my 20 years, no matter what that appearance looked like. I realized, you know what? Yeah. Even that guy who never stopped talking in class, the girls I never fit in with because I wasn't sporty, my doctors who dealt with my foot fungus, my dietitian I had during my hospitalization who let me change the yucky sandwich to the peanut butter and jelly one. Oh, that's so good. You shaped me. To the strangers who hold the door, let me cross the road at stop signs. Oh my god, this freaking cheese. Thank you for showing me that there's an abundance of kindness in this world. Old friends have shown me how much I've grown and matured because once they were everything I needed. To my current friends, thank you for accepting me as I am, unhealed, unedited, and a freaking hot mess most days, and for choosing me and standing up for me when I can't stand up for myself. You give me strength. Thank you to my family for, for showing me that kindness is stronger than hate, that the world is tough but we are tougher, and that we don't just give up. The boys who I loved in the only way I knew how to love at that time. Thank you for teaching me that I can only give away love if I have enough love to give. Thank you for teaching me that I'm deserving of love, not replaceable, confusing, questionable love, but committed, unwavering love. So thank you to the boys that couldn't love me back. To the boys that literally took my heart, stomped on it, and ran it through a paper shredder. Well, it really freaking sucked. Still, I thank you because you've shown me that I'm resilient and that you cannot break me even if you've taken a piece of me with you. Thank you for giving up on me because you showed me me that the only person I really need to never give up on me is me. Rejection is redirection. Repeat that to yourself a few times. And thank you to the boy who really tried to love me in the only way he knew how to love at that time. For the years of friendship and the peace of my childhood you will always have. You will always be a piece of home to me. And I'm sorry I didn't know how to be there for you the way you deserved me to be there. I didn't even know how to do that for me. And I'll carry the lessons you taught me in my heart everywhere I go. And to the girls who hated on me for being me, I'm sorry that you don't yet have enough self-love to see your full worth. I believe in you and I'm rooting for you. I hope you carry yourself forward with love instead of hate. For I would have blamed myself, but I know now that one who does not love oneself does not have the capacity to truly love and be happy for others. That was me. And for the man that sent an army of men to bully me on social media. To the man who made me question the validity of my own thoughts. To the man who uses hate and ridicule and judgment to fuel his own self-esteem. You've taught me that someone else's insecurities projected onto you is not your reality. They are not your fault and they don't define you. I let his hatred own me and I carried it for months, but it showed me so much about my strength and made me so proud that I can live my life spreading kindness and compassion instead of hate. To my viewers, there are not enough words or hugs or pancakes in this world to explain to you how much you have changed my life and the lessons you've taught me. Compassion, goodness, kindness, respect, understanding, patience, self-worth, self-love, self-care, confidence, independence, courage, strength are only a handful of things that you've taught me in the short amount of time we've had together. Thank you for seeing my work before I could. You helped me become me. You really did. You are all my soulmate and I am who I am because of all of you. This summer was different. It looked fun, carefree, yummy. There were lots of smells and memories and to anyone else, it kind of looks like I have my shit together, which is just so ironic because I've never felt more lost in my entire life. I guess that's why they say health and wellness and happiness are felt and not seen. The more I ran, the more I tried to fill up my days, travel, make excuses for myself, the more lost I became. I used to think, okay, losing myself is the first step in finding myself again, but maybe I need to stop trying to find myself because who am I even trying to find? I don't even freaking know myself. I will not find myself in school and relationships and projects because these things are not who I am. I will not find myself by stepping out of my comfort zone, eating my fear foods, challenging my body, ending toxic relationships, taking on a new hobby. This is not finding myself. This is creating myself. Each day we're creating ourselves, uncovering unhealed wounds, strengthening our understanding of how we are wired, failing, disappointing, grieving. Each day is a chance to get to know yourself and create yourself and be more comfortable losing yourself. Stop running. Stop hiding. Just stop. Breathe. Okay, bring your attention to the moment. Let your mind find gratitude in the simple things. A buttery croissant, a sunny day, a kind stranger. What happened in the past happened. You're not the same person you were a year ago, and that is beautiful. You were so worried about the future, but you are living in it now, and you are okay. 
an excerpt from Whitney Hansen's book, really touched me. I know now that this is how it works. You don't get to keep everyone in your life forever. There are some people that are just meant to be a sunrise for you, a light to pull you out of the darkness. There are friends, lovers, relationships that are seasonal. No matter how deep of a conversation you had with that person at 2 a.m., no matter how much you shared your heart, even if you can draw the lines of their smile like a map of a too familiar road in the back of your mind, there almost always comes a time to move on, a time to let go. And regardless of letting go, I just wanted you to know that you're always going to feel a little bit like home to me. No matter how temporary, it is so beautiful that I got to call so many hearts my home. So leave the past where it belongs. Remember, we want to move forward, and we left and gave up what we once had for a reason. If it's out of your hands, it deserves freedom from your mind too. You have to remember that after these goodbyes, there will always be another hello. Saying goodbye is hard, but maybe hard is good. Maybe endings are beautiful. Maybe change is exactly what you need. And maybe the love that we've been searching for our entire lives has been inside you all this time. Love you, Linda! I love you guys too.